Bill Nye, back from our trip to Florida. The president and I had a very nice conversation about climate change, science education, science education for girls, and especially the future of the U.S. As a guy born in the U.S., as a patriot, I'm just uh, delighted that we are all working together, really, at last, on addressing climate change so that we can, dare I say it, change the world. Uh, check out our conversation. All right, are we ready? When we decided to take action, when the Clean Air Act passed, when Clean Water Act passes, when the EPA is empowered, it turns out that we can solve these problems. But the danger is, is that we then take it for granted. Scientific literacy generally and encouraging young people to be excited about science. You, you know, you're the science guy. This is your demographic. You're, you're, <laughs> these are you're, my people. You're, you're, these are your peeps, as they say. Yeah, yeah. You're focused all the time on getting young people excited about science. What have you learned about what works, and why do you think it is that our schools are not more successful in getting kids excited about science, technology, engineering, math, particularly when it comes to girls, but also uh, when it comes to uh, African Americans, yeah. Hispanics? Where, where do you think things are breaking down? Because kids naturally are curious. Oh, they yeah. love tooling around and figuring Absolutely. stuff out. What happens? Well, our problem, <laughs> we have uh, you have to invest in science education and the very compelling research. Ten years old is about as old as you can be to get the so-called lifelong passion for science. Mm -hmm. And it might be, it seems to me, it's about as old as you can be to get a lifelong passion for anything. Right. Like when did you want to lead and change things? Uh, you were you know, I'm, I might be, a, I was kind of a late bloomer, I think. It, it wasn't until I was like 45 I decided I was going to do something <laughs> really? with my life. But <laughs> really? <laughs> no, no, I'm teasing. What's te next? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm teasing. But, but, but your general point, though, is is that you want to catch kids around 10 years, before, before they're 10. Before they're 10. And it's easy. Right. This is the thing. We want, for my side of it, we want science in every, gra every day and every grade. Right. So there's a huge opportunity for us because teaching science Elementary level is very inexpensive, mm -hmm. uh, and we we fight these surprising problems about reading and arithmetic and standards and so on. Right. It seems like a very solvable problem, but we have to, inv in my opinion, we have to invest in the elementary grades. Yeah. Part of it, though, is also I think our culture has to support and elevate science. And part of the concern that I get sometimes is that. You know, historically, America was built on innovation. Well, science. I grew up with the space program. I'm I, all about science. You know, and everybody talks about the space program, which is was so inspiring to, to your generation. But you know, it goes a little bit further back than that. You got Benjamin Franklin with the kite, and uh, you've got yeah, uh, Thomas, Thomas Edison, Edison. And, and the Wright brothers, and so that has always been in our DNA. Absolutely. And yet, sometimes what we see in the popular culture is uh, a if not denigration, then not an emphasis on science. And but it's changing. But it's changing, and that's the good news. Yeah, so, you know, it says in the Constitution, yeah. Section 1, Paragraph 8, shall promote the progress of science and the useful arts, yeah. along with everything else you got to do. That's part of my <laughs> constitutional duty. <laughs> it really well, is. But, but, but you're right in terms of, and that's why uh, I think it's so important for our political leaders to not just talk about STEM and education and talk about basic research in the abstract, but number one, fund it. So put your money where your mouth is. But number two, when you're making decisions around important issues, make sure that you take science seriously. I, I, I mean, when, when I see members of Congress being part of the climate denier clubs and uh, basically stiff arming what we know are facts, and not rebutting them with other facts, but rebutting them with anecdote or, or just being dismissive. And, and oh, I'm not a scientist, I'm, or, so therefore, or, or I'm not a scientist. Yeah. Well, I'm not a scientist either, but I know a lot of scientists. I, I, I have the capacity to understand science. It's not I have that the capacity to look at facts and base my conclusions on you know, evidence. That's right. And and you know, part of shifting our political culture, I think, is we've got to model for our kids that facts matter. If, if we know that uh, the Everglades are starting to get salt water in them, and we know that that's going to affect the alligators and the herons and the birds in this place, and, and uh, ultimately going to affect our drinking water, and we see the facts, 
We have to acknowledge those facts. We can argue about how to fix it. And Mr. President, I'll be honest with you, I was born in the U.S. I was trained as an engineer in the U.S. I'm a patriot. Both of my parents were veterans of World War II. They're interred at Arlington. And I want the U.S. to lead. I want the U.S. to be the best in the world at the new, the solutions and the, the innovations and what it's going to take to address climate change for the betterment of everybody. We're, we're, we're getting busy. Uh, America's beginning to lead. Uh, because of our leadership in putting forward a climate plan that was pretty aggressive, China, for the first time, uh, has submitted its own plan. Uh, and what we're trying to do is now mobilize the world. In Paris in the fall, we're going to have a conference to see if we can arrive at a global agreement around uh, tackling climate change in a serious way. Um, but you're absolutely right that if America is not at the forefront, it will not happen. That's and right. yeah, I always say to people, part of what makes America exceptional, it's not just the size of our economy or the power of our military, but it's the power of our ideas and the power of our example. And, uh, and there's a good uh, moment for us to lead. So Absolutely. thank you, Bill. Thank you, Mr. Perry. Great conversation. Thank you, sir.